Hello and welcome again. In this video, we'll talk about the computational aspects of the Elgamal uh, encryption scheme. Uh, in the previous video, we saw an example of that. So let's talk about the computational aspect. So how many uh, things do you have to actually compute to set it up and decrypt, and decrypt you know, from the point of view of Bob and Alice? So the first thing you have to do, of course, is the key generation. So which is the way that you're going to compute the public parameters which is usually done by Bob or a third party who's going to set up those parameters. So assuming that Bob is the one who does it, then Bob needs to generate uh, P, which is a prime number, alpha generator, and B is that um, exponentiation there with a random and chosen number. So the first thing that has to be done is the prime number, of course. A prime number uh, has to be at least 10, 24 bits. This is for security reasons. And I think we have mentioned this before. Otherwise, uh, using these grid logs, you can actually break the Elgamal scheme. So one of the things that you actually do to generate uh, a random uh, prime numbers of 1024 bit is using probabilistic algorithms, of course. One of those uh, we saw in previous videos, which is the probable prime in Java, or you can use any other um, uh, prime number generators. Now, Another security uh, uh, example, or not example, but requirement for uh, this prime P is that the prime factors of P minus one should not be as small. Now, and by prime factors, I mean the prime factors that are not two, the number two, of course, because P is odd, P minus one is even, so two will always be a divisor of P minus one. So I'm talking about the prime factors that are not two. And the reason for that also is because if you chose uh, small factors other than two that are small, it will be possible also uh, computing discrete logs and then it will break down the Elgamal uh, scheme. So that's for prime numbers. Now for the alpha, it has to be generated of the uh, P star. That is also done using probabilistic algorithms to find a generator. Now, one way you can do it is doing a brute force here, which is check all the elements of CP star and see if whether or not they are generators. But that shouldn't be that should not be very um, very efficient. So, one way to do it is use again probabilistic algorithms to find a generator alpha because all you need is just to find one generator. So, one way to do it is use an algorithm, which I'm not going to go into the details of this algorithm here. This is just a screenshot that I took uh, from a book that uh, has this um, probabilistic algorithm to find generators. Now, if you actually pause the video and look a little bit of, the, uh, of this, this here requires uh, a partial factorization of P minus one. Now, uh, so that's one of the things that it has to be done. We're not going to go into the details of any of this. It's just to mention to you that alpha or generator uh, also is created using probabilistic algorithms. And of course, Bob has to compute uh, the generator to the randomly chosen B. And this remember this B is between two and P minus P minus two. And so modular exponentiation, which of course is not difficult to do. You can use the square multiply algorithm for this. So that's in the side of Bob. That's the one who set up the whole uh, encryption here. Or is not if it is not Bob, then it's a third party who actually does it. Now for the encryption, what are the things that Alice has to do? So Alice has to do two modular exponentiations. One of them is to compute the ephemeral key. If you remember from the last video, that is computed with gen the generator to the randomly chosen number between two and p minus two from Alice. So this is doing the square multiplier algorithm. So that's one, one way to do it. And also the shared key, which is, this is the private key, which is B. B is uh, public. A is the randomly chosen number from Alice. And then this is a modular exponentiation. So two of them. And then you have a modular multiplication, which is the uh, plain text X times the shared key. And this is, of course, all modulo P. So two modular exponentiations and one modular multiplication. Now, that's from encryption. Now, for decryption, which is the, also the part of Bob, Bob has to get the chair key, which is just the ephemeral key that was sent through the channel to the uh, random exponent that he chose to set up the Elgamal scheme. 
and this is of course modulo p g out. He also has to compute the inverse of this number, so because he has to multiply the ciphertext by the inverse of k to recuperate the plain text. So that's like one thing that has to do, to modular, uh, modular inversion, which can be done using the extended Euclidean algorithm. Now, all of these things that I'm mentioning here, if you haven't seen that before, this doesn't, this won't make sense, any, any sense to you. So you have to go back a little bit and maybe watch those videos to uh, see how this is all done. And also would be a good idea to watch video number two of this sequence of videos to see how this is all done. Because in this video, we're only talking about, uh, in general, general, what kind of computations are done. And finally, of course, one modular multiplication here for uh, Bob, which is uh, the ciphertext times uh, the inverse of the key. This is all modulo P. So that's for the computational aspect. So we have some modular exponentiation, some modular multiplications. Um, it's not difficult to do, of course, for the computer. It won't take too much of time. All right, now is let's talk about a little bit of the security of the algorithm. So there are two things. Uh, when we talk about the attacks um, for the for an algorithm, and I think we talked about this for the RSA, is the passive and the active attacks. Now, the passive attacks, basically what they are, is when we're assuming that Eve is not trying to change the ciphertext. She's only, she only wants to actually just get the plain text. She doesn't want to change anything, she just wants to get the plain text, which is at least an only thing here. So as of today, which is November of 2016, the only known passive attack is computing discrete logarithms. Now, if you have an efficient way to compute discrete logarithms, then the El Gamal scheme will not work, will not be secure. But as of today, well, there's nothing that is efficient at this point, at least with the parameters that uh, are chosen for the El Gamal, which is the prime 10, 24 bits and alpha and all of that, all of those requirements as of today has not been possible to do the discrete logs of, for those big prime numbers. Okay, so let's see what is the uh, information that uh, Eve has, so, which is the attacker here, Eve. So what Eve knows is P, alpha and B, which is our old public parameters, which everybody knows. And because she is listening through the channel, then she also knows the ephemeral key and the ciphertext Y that was sent by Alice. So this all was sent through the secure channel and this is this is public. So she basically knows five numbers here, these five numbers that are here. So she knows P, alpha, B, K, sub E, and Y. And remember, all of these computations here, she doesn't know this is small A, small B, and of course she doesn't know K or X. She just knows these results, all of these things that are here on the left. Now let's assume for a second that Eve knows an efficient algorithm for discrete logs, for computing discrete logs. And I will show you how she will get the plain text using just the fact that she has an efficient way to compute discrete logarithms. Now, if she can do, if she has that kind of algorithm, what she can do is she can find Bob's secret exponent B, which remember it was randomly chosen between two and P minus two by Bob. And using this, then she will be able to recover the plain text X. And why is that? So let's see, she knows B. Now she also knows that B is alpha to the B modulo P. Now she doesn't know B at this point, but what is this equation telling me here? This equation is telling me that this exponent is the discrete log in base alpha of b in zp star. Now, if you look at the right-hand side here of this equation, all on the right-hand side is known. Alpha is known, that's public, b is public, p is public. This is all public. So if Eve knows a way to compute discrete logs, she can efficiently, she can easily get this number b here, which is the secret exponent for Bob. Now Eve can compute the share key. So in that case, that's it, that's game over for the algorithm if you compute the share key. So the share key, it is the ephemeral key, this key that was sent 
through the channel. This is sent together with the ciphertext. And B is something that we already computed here using the discrete log modulo P. So this will be known. So once she has the secret key, the way to get back the plain text is you multiply the ciphertext, which was sent through the channel, times the inverse of K modulo P that can be computed using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So what is the hard part to do here? The hard part will be this using or computing the discrete log. If you don't know how to do this, this couple of things that are here are really easy to do. The exponentiation, the modular exponentiation, and finding the inverse, and also multiplying again modular, exponential, modular multiplication, that would not be uh, difficult to do. So let's see an example with small numbers uh, to show you exactly how this works. So how this passive attack will work if you, for example, have a good way to compute the discrete logs. So I'm going to give you a small number so it makes sense, more sense to you. So suppose that you are Eve and you get the following information listening through that channel. So I have the numbers P, alpha, and B, which are public. So in this case, I have chosen 83. That's a prime number. 45 is a generator of ZP star, something that you can check. And 63 is the number that Bob got acted after that model exponentiation. Now, I don't know what the exponent is. I just know the result. So this is known to everyone that's public. And also because if you're E, you also listen through the channel. So you got the F metal key and the ciphertext. These are this couple of numbers were sent through that channel. So this is the information that is sent by Alice to Bob. So let's say now Eve knows how to compute this credit log. So Eve can compute Bob's private key by doing this. The private exponent for Bob is a discrete logarithm in base alpha of B. Now I know or Eve knows alpha, this is public, 45. Uh, B is public, 63, something that you saw there. And this is the discrete log and C, and C 83 star. This discrete log that you see here gives me 10. Now if you wonder how I got this, is you can use baby step giant step algorithm here because these numbers are small this will be not difficult to compute. It will not take a very long time. Now, you can check that this answer is equal to this once you know the answer. Knowing the answer is easy to check because you just take this 45 to this exponent and it has to give you 63. And then you actually do this modular exponentiation, you actually get 63. So you can go ahead and check that. Now, that's if you know the answer. But we don't know the answer, but you can use the baby step, giant step algorithm. Or if Eve has a really powerful uh, algorithm to compute discrete logs, she will use that. So she gets 10. Now, once she gets 10, then that she's ready to compute the chair key. So now the attacker can compute the chair key, which is, remember, the chair key is the Eve metal key to whatever B is, which is what's computed with the discrete log. In this case, it's 10 modulo P. So the F metal key is 30. If you remember, let me scroll all the way up here. The F metal key here is 30. And let's put it here. So it's uh, to the 10, which is the ex private exponent that was computed with the discrete log, modulo 83. This is a simple modular exponentiation, and it gives me 49. One way to do it is the square multiply algorithm. So that's the shared key, K is 49. Then what she can do in this case is she can compute the inverse of k, which it can be done using the extended Euclidean algorithm. So this will be 49, which is the value of k, the inverse of 49 modulo 53, which will be 61. You can remember you can do that using the extended Euclidean algorithm. And that's it. So finally, finally, Eve can compute the plain text because she knows that the plain text is the ciphertext times the inverse of k modulo p. So y is 9. Remember, y is, is known to Eve because she was listening to the channel. That was 9. The inverse of k is 61. We compute it over here. And that's modulo 83. So you do this modular multiplication. You get 51. And that's sadly, of course, sadly for Alice and Bob, that should be the plain text. So Eve was able to uh, recover the plain text. Now, the only thing, if you go uh, 
over this video again. The only thing that is difficult to do here, and difficult means here in this case, computational feasible is modular multiplications, modular inverses, they're not, they are not difficult. Modular exponentiation, that's not difficult. The only thing that is difficult here is the discrete log. That is difficult so far as of today. So if she knows that if she has a way to do discrete logs, then the LGMAL of course is, is of no use. So that's one of the things I wanted to talk about uh, for the LGMAL, this kind of uh, security, in this case, the passive attacks. So we, will be able, we were able to compute the plain text. So in the next video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you, or I'm, just, I'm gonna discuss a little bit about the, not the passive attacks, but the active attacks. So that's the case with Eve, tries to manipulate the cipher text that she doesn't want to actually get the, the plain text per se but she wants to manipulate the cipher text and so Bob gets an incorrect uh, cipher text and of course it will get an incorrect plain text when she when he tries to decrypt so that's all I have to say for this video so I'll stop the video now and I will see you in the next video